Hello there, welcome back to my world of stuff. My name is Paul Mount, hope you're all well. If you've just stumbled across this video because you saw the words Doctor Who in the thumbnail, why not like and subscribe? Um, that would be really good. This channel is full of reviews, film reviews, uh, retro movie reviews, unboxing, cinema trips, all that sort of stuff. And if you stick around to the end of this video, there will be a important announcement about Doctor Who in this channel. I'll come to that shortly. Um, right. Speaking of Doctor Who, let's get stuck in. Um, I am a massive Doctor Who fan. I have been since the 60s. I'm a huge fan of the series. I've written about it extensively in magazines and books. Uh, I've written some Doctor Who short stories. Um, I've done a lot of stuff relating to Doctor Who. When I started this channel, I specifically wanted to not do a lot of stuff on Doctor Who. I wanted to broaden things a little bit because I'm a fan of the genre generally and read films and, and books and so on. And I wanted to talk about stuff like that rather than plow a Doctor Who furrow because there are a lot of YouTube channels that do Doctor Who stuff. However, uh, I have to bow to um, the analytics, as it were, and, uh, yeah, this channel does seem to be stuck in a bit of a rut. Um, not really getting much of the way of subscribers, not getting much of the way of comments, not getting much of the way of anything, really. So, um, that leads me to what I'll be talking about at the end of the video. But what I'm talking about today is some Doctor Who content. Um, and this, these particular items I'm going to talk about today I would probably put in a physical media update. Because if you've seen those videos that I do... I do them as well, by the way. New Blu-rays and DVDs and so on. Um, I normally put books and collectibles and things in there as well. But as I haven't actually picked up much in the way of physical media in the last couple of weeks, there's not really enough to do a full video. So I thought, I've had three new Doctor Who books uh, in the post the last few days. So I thought I would talk about them and give you my thoughts on them. Now, they're not necessarily reviews because of these three books. I've only read one of them in full. I flipped through another one and I just last night started the third. And in fact... I say they're three Doctor Who books, they're really sort of two or two thirds Doctor Who books. So I'll talk about these books and um, just uh, recommend whether I think you should get them or not. And I think you should certainly get uh, this one. This is called Pull to Open. This is by Paul Hayes and is the follow up to his book that came out, I think, in 2020, or 2020. Time goes so quickly, uh, which was called The Long Game, which I think is up on my shelf up there somewhere should be somewhere on there because it's a great book I can't see it at the moment but it's there somewhere um anyway uh, the long game was uh, a fantastic meticulously researched and incredibly thorough book about how Doctor Who came back in 2005 how it had fallen out of favor in the late 80s how it briefly came back in 1996 with the Paul McGann film and then everything that was going on behind the scenes to bring it back to get it back on on air and I think it's a popular misconception that the BBC wanted nothing to do with Doctor Who when it came off the air. But they did. They But they couldn't work out how to do it. The best way to move it forward and to modernise it and to regenerate it, if you like. And it took a long time before the stars aligned and the right people were in place with the real will to make it happen. Um, the fans of the programme who knew how to do it and knew how to bring it to the screen and hopefully make it a success. And The Long Game was all about that story. And it, and it was an interesting look at various people and how they all almost in an act of fate all came together at the right time in the right place to make it happen uh paul's new book pull to open is very similar in that it goes back to 1962 and it, it dares to ask questions about the actual origins of doctor who and who came up with the idea who developed the idea and how the bbc worked sometimes didn't work together to bring it to the screen now over the years there have been a lot of articles and and dvd features and documentaries and, and even books about the origins of doctor who but they've all skated across the surface and they presented certain facts over the years researchers have done a lot of work they've gone to the bbc's um script libraries in caversham they've dug deep into the bbc's written archive and the bbc to be fair keeps a fantastic written archive of memos and documents and things going back to its earliest days um, so it has been possible for a lot of people in the past, researchers and journalists, to go and dig into that archive and find these documents and present them in different forms. But that information is scattered and it's all over the place. What this book does is pull all that together and does more. It, it goes deeper. It, and it, there's stuff in here which I didn't know about, uh, information I didn't know about. And I, I think I'm fairly well read in the history of Doctor Who. Read lots of the books and I've seen the films, the documentaries and so on. 
This is then the definitive version of how Doctor Who came to be, going right back to 1962 when the BBC, with an interest in making science fiction, imagine that, that that doesn't necessarily exist on British television these days, Uh, they commissioned a report into the viability of science fiction and what sort of science fiction the BBC should be doing. And it, it introduces us to the people. And it tells us a lot about the people, which is what's interesting about the book. It, it mentions their name and then gives a sort of potted biography of that person's history and how they became part of this story. And also, Paul adds sort of historical context. What else was going on in the world while all this was going on at the BBC? While the ideas that became Doctor Who were sort of nebulous and formulating what was happening in the pop charts, what was happening in the political world, what was happening in the world generally. is even an interesting part of a chapter which looks at... Uh, the rose-tinted spectacles that we think that the oh the sixties and seventies it was so life was so much simpler before the internet and yeah but if you look at some of the things that Paul looks at in the book it's not the case it's just that we look at things differently now through a different prism back in the sixties things were as chaotic and mad and crazy as they are now but don't forget back in the sixties we had the Cuban Missile Crisis which almost wiped out all life on Earth and um, no matter what happens nowadays we're not quite at that point yet so yeah the sixties weren't quite as Uh, as sweet as we might think but there certainly was an explosion of imagination and talent going on in terms of tv and music which i think i think we've got that today in a different way but um anyway i'm going off the point slightly uh pull to open is a great read i can't recommend this highly enough of these three books if you're going to get one this really i mean they're all good but this is the essential one because it's it's fascinating. I mean, it's not a photo book. Don't look, don't expect lots of lovely photographs of William Hartnell and the TARDIS. There's lots and lots of pages of text. But it's not dry text. It's interesting. It's factual, with a little bit of opinion. But it really takes us through how the idea of Doctor Who formed and developed and changed across the months before it went into production. And all the problems it had with production, and as I said, the resistance with certain departments of the BBC who didn't think that the BBC was equipped to make a series of this nature. It's just a great book. It really is, as I said, it is the ultimate word on the origins of Doctor Who, and you need to get it if you're interested. It's called um, Pull to Open. It's published by Ten Acre Film Books, and it's out now. Um, it's, it, I finished it yesterday, and... It's, you know, it almost is, I, I couldn't put it down. It's just, I, I, I love books about classic days of television and how easy it seemed to be to get things on TV. Or that idea looked at and accepted back in those days and how the BBC decided we want to do this and they would do it. Uh, these days it's all committees and demographics and blue sky thinking and all this sort of nonsense. This is about coming up with an idea and making it happen. And it's a terrific read. Very much massively recommended. The second book is one... Ugh, um, I'm making a noise because it's heavy. This is published by Telos Books, which is the imprint uh, run by David J. Howe and Stephen James Walker, two Doctor Who fans of, of long standing. They over the years have published a lot of books under the Telos Books imprint. Telos, of course, being the planet of the Tomb of the Cybermen, mm. um, which are very much niche books to do with Doctor Who and other genre titles. Books that, in honest, all honesty, wouldn't really be published by a major publishing brand. But um, publishing has changed these days and it's possible for small publishers to come up with incredibly impressive visual books. And that's what we have here with the fanzine book. This is written by Alistair McGowan with an afterword by Chris Chibnall, Doctor Who's most recent showrunner, and forward by Martin Wiggins, who's a well-known name in the fan world in the 1970s. This book is of particular interest to me because I got into Doctor Who fandom in the late 1970s when organised Doctor Who fandom was just pulling itself together. And these days, Doctor Who fans have got the internet. They've got chat rooms, they've got forums, they've got all these places where they can talk about and slag off generally Doctor Who. Back in the 70s, it was different. Doctor Who's history was just being investigated and probed. Fans were coming together to express their love and admiration for the series by writing about it and drawing it and telling their own stories about it. And they were doing this through the medium of the fanzine. These were magazines often very crudely published, um, printed on um, these sort of skins, um, on these very primitive uh, Gestetna copy machines. Uh, but they were full of passion and they were full of enthusiasm. And in from the 70s to the mid to late 80s, these absolutely thrived. And they became more sophisticated as printing techniques became more affordable and more readily available. Uh, so this book actually looks at the history of Doctor Who fanzines 
from the 70s to, the, well, as it says, the golden age of the 70s and 80s. 300 different fanzine titles, and it's it's just an extraordinary book. The, the layout is just, you know, this is just top draw stuff. This isn't, although it's not a major publishing house, you know, I can't imagine this book could have been done and laid out any better with more love and affection than this. I'm not going to show you all of it, of course. It's got that lovely new book, sort of vaguely paint-like smell, which I love. Um, this book is something I'm interested in because I mentioned the founding revolution of the 70s, and I was there. I was involved in that from a, from a distance, I suppose, in Cardiff. I and a couple of friends of mine, Tim Robbins and Gary Hopkins, uh, came together... Uh, I put together a fanzine. They, they worked on a fanzine called 231163, which is referenced in here. That eventually became the Doctor Who Review, which I edited for about six issues. That was back in 79, 80. Um, and then we were involved in a research project called an Adventure in Space and Time, which was a loosely format uh, part work, if you like, which looked at Doctor Who from the beginning. And we were there at the beginning with early research of, of Doctor Who, looking into the history of the show narratively and creatively um they were great days i mean this book i've only just started reading it but flicking through it brings back lots of memories of uh saturday afternoon sunday afternoons that we would spend uh myself tim and gary having written up and put together this family and these weren't visual things particularly they were mainly text-based we'd have a photographic cover and some photographs on the back page that we printed up properly but it was just sort of Romeo printed type things. And uh, we would print these things in Tim's father's office in the centre of Cardiff. And we would lay out these pages, the ink was wet, and we would just walk round and round the table, putting these magazines together and then stapling them and sending them off uh, in receipt of a postal over 30p. Uh, extraordinary times, creative times. And it's, you know, I look back at it very fondly because that's what's led me to do stuff like this, writing for Starburst magazine, all the creative things i've done since have their origins back in the fanzine days which is why this book is a massive jolt of nostalgia for me it's a huge heavy book as you can see um but it's just so visual and so beautifully put together with fantastic imagery i mean it's amazing that so many of these very old now magazines still survive and uh beautifully reproduced here yeah, I and mean, there we have TARDIS, which was the Doctor Appreciation Society's official magazine, and in fact still is. I'm trying to find some pictures of the magazine that I was involved with, um, but there are just so many images in here, it's exhausting to, to look through it. I mean, I'm really looking forward to reading this. I read the first chapter last night, and uh, yeah, it, it's it's going to be one of the great Doctor Who books of the year, and of course it's anniversary year, so there's a lot of stuff coming out, but I think this one's going to be tough to beat. It's available now from Talos Books. Uh, and they're not cheap because they're a small press, but mm, it's my gorgeous and they're a labour of love. The third book is and isn't a Doctor Who book. It's about two-thirds Doctor Who book. There is a, a fan, or a very creative fan called Andrew Mark Thompson. And for years, he's been creating these fantastic parody images of annuals and toys, things that didn't exist, but might have done with packaging very much in the style of the things we get got in the 60s and 70s. Um, Andrew Mark Thompson... And Talos has now put out a book of some of his illustrations. Some, um, I assume lots of them are new. I, I, I've seen a lot of his stuff, but I'm not fully aware of it all. Uh, it's called This Is a Fake. The title, of course, Doctor Who fans will know, comes from um, a line in the 1979 Doctor Who story, The City of Death. And as it says in the back, there are things from Doctor Who and other cult TV shows that have never existed until now. This book contains some of those things that never existed thanks to the extensive research and Photoshop skills of Andrew Mark Thompson. Discover Doctor Who's lost roots on the radio during the Lost War, the British horror films of the 1950s and Doctor Who's position amongst them. BBC comic that attempted to rebrand Quatermass for a CBBC audience desperate for TV sci-fi content in the 2010s. Uh, this book basically is full of things that didn't exist, but it would have been fun if they did. Just looking uh, broadly at it... Uh, You've got things like um, one of those horrible dolls that you often see in magazines. Uh, this is based on Barbara from the Aztecs. Uh, you can send off. Uh, Please reserve for me one of your hauntingly beautiful Cleo Cat Barbara trial figurine as vividly described in your well-written and engaging ad. Then there's sort of Doctor Who figure things that never existed of obscure characters. Um, 
one of the things I particularly like, and the thing I really like about this is the non-Doctor Who stuff, because a lot of it is stuff that you need a decent knowledge of Doctor Who to sort of understand uh, the idea of toys based on characters from things like Stones of Blood, um, just obscure things, um, things that you need a thorough knowledge of Doctor Who to really get the joke. The joke is, is the joke itself, but also the way that it's done. Um, there you've got sort of imaginary bird's eye, frozen food, renamed monoid's eye. Monoid, of course, being the one-eyed alien creatures from Doctor Who's The Ark in 1965. That's how um, obscure it is, if you like. Um, Happy Easter, Doctor Who Easter eggs that never existed, um, based on some quite obscure Doctor Who monsters. So, yeah, you need a good working knowledge of Doctor Who to get the best of those parts of it. But my favourite bits from what I've looked at so far, are the bits that actually aren't to do with Doctor Who. Um, and they remind me, there used to be a website called, I think it was called TV Cream, which Charlie Brooker was involved with. And it used to sort of run parody TV schedules and magazines, looking at the sort of the vacuity of, of popular culture at the time. And this has got things like um, t mock-up TV times covers and mock-up TV schedules, which sort of parody the way that those sort of magazine things are written. Uh, and there's a very funny one with a TV schedule with like ITV2, which is full of Midsummer Murders repeats. And every episode has a variation of the same plot line of Inspector Barnaby investigates a murder in Midsummer. There's been a murder in Midsummer. Detective Barnaby investigates. And those sorts of stupid jokes. A mock-up of a Daily Mirror uh, cover parodying what could have happened at William Hartnell uh, public event um, it's for a very specific sort of sense of humour um, but I found it, I, I haven't looked at it all yet, I flicked through it and I'm, it is one of those that you can flick through but I'm going to read it from cover to cover um, it's just very funny, very sharp very very specific sort of slightly warped um, sideways sense of humour but it looks very funny and it's, it's very well put together um, so yeah, that's the third of the three Doctor Who related books which I've picked up. I recommend them all. Pull to open is essential if you're interested in the history of Doctor Who and you don't mind wading through pages and pages of quite dense but fascinating text. It's a great book. It's a great read. Um, the fanzine book is a fantastic piece of nostalgia and this is a thing that's just mad. Um, I thoroughly recommend all three of those books um, in anniversary year. They're available now. Um, you won't regret buying them. Right, other Doctor Who news, announcement, if you like. Having indicated at the beginning of this channel that I've tried to avoid doing Doctor Who content, I think in this 60th anniversary, it would be churlish of me to keep doing that. I mean, I've reviewed uh, the episodes when new episodes have appeared, which has been infrequently over the last year or so, and new Blu-ray sets and books and things. But I want to do a bit more on the series itself, I think. Uh, in, a, in a cynical move to get some more subscribers, to be honest, yeah, I'll be honest about it. And hopefully get some more comments. What I'm going to do for the next 10 or 11 weeks until the anniversary specials are transmitted at the end of November. We think it's the end of November. Every week I'm going to do uh, a video um, talking about a specific Doctor Who story or episode. I'm not going to be reacting to them because that's been done to death. There are plenty of videos of people gawping at, at images of Doctor Who episodes. Um, what I'm going to do is talk about a specific story and things I like about the story. Just reviewing it, basically. Um, important bits of Doctor Who lore established in those episodes. Um, and just generally giving a 10-minute chat about a particular story. I'll be starting off, hopefully, later this week. What I'm going to do with the first one is An Unearthly Child, the very first episode of Doctor Who. I'm not going to do the whole serial because, you know, cavemen, a bit dull. But the first episode is the most important episode of Doctor Who ever made, really. That's the one that set it up and established what it was all about. And... It's one of those episodes you can watch again and again. So I'm going to be watching that later this week, putting up a video about it. After that, though, hmm, that's where you come in. Um, if you're a Doctor Who fan, why not let me know what stories you'd like me to look at? We're talking about the classic series. I'm not going to be doing the 21st century series because I think that's an area that's been quite well mined. Um, any particular serials from 1963 to 1989 when the show finished? And I even include... 
uh, obviously, the last three Doctors who aren't my favourites. I mean, I'm a fan of the first four Doctors. I think the show in the 80s is struggling a little bit. But I'm quite, quite happy to review a Sylvester McCoy story or a Colin Baker story. But let me know if there are any classic Doctor Who stories you would like to hear me talk about. Um, and I will re-watch them, which is never a chore. And then I will put together a video and chat about them. Just general observations about interesting things, interesting visuals, interesting bits of dialogue, interesting characters, and where the story fits into the, the story of Doctor Who in a broader broader sense. So that's the new Doctor Who anniversary series that I'll be running for the next two or three months until the series returns in November. So, uh, yeah, let me know what stories you think you'd like to hear me talk about in the comments down below and I'll make a list and I will uh, draw up some likely contenders. I will also be doing, uh, revisiting a series I did a couple of years ago when I started the channel. Um, it was my um, favourite Doctor Rankings, if you like. I did, I think, two episodes of that and then it fell away. So I'm going to revisit that and start it again. I'm going to reconsider my options and I will put together a series of videos, just my favourite Doctors and why. Um... So that's plenty of Doctor Who stuff coming up. Of course, we've got the Season 20 box set coming up soon. I'll be talking about that. That's up, might be next week, actually, or the week after. Um, so I shall be doing a piece of that as well. So Doctor Who fans, I can subscribe because this channel has got lots of stuff coming up in the next couple of months. Right, thank you for watching. I will see you soon. Um, yeah, like and subscribe. Leave some Doctor Who suggestions. I'll see you next time. Until I do, keep taking the stuff.